Let me show you how I added steering wheel controls to my base model Honda Fit. Like all DIY tutorials, this is just me telling you what I did. Your results may vary if you decide you want to try it, but that's not my fault. That's on you if you want to try it and you mess your car up. The procedure I used is an adaptation of what Nico 3257 on the Fit Freak forum uh, came up with. So credit really goes to him. Uh, I've just adapted it a little bit to try to make it a little bit easier, at least for me. On a scale of 0 to 10, I would say this is like a 6. 10 being you completely rebuild the engine. So this is a fairly advanced thing to do. If you're familiar with soldering with electronics, it should go a little bit easier for you. Okay, ultimately what we're going to do is take the existing harness that connects to the radio and splice in two wires from the new wheel control through the steering wheel clock spring. That's this thing that allows wires to turn while the wheel turns through two new wires into the back of the radio, which we're going to build this little jumper thing so that that way we don't have to chop up the existing harness because that kind of sucks on a new car to do that. Step one, disconnect the battery. Grab a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen the minus side, and pop that thing off. You need to do that because you'll be disconnecting the airbag. And when I disconnect the airbag and power is connected to the car, the car's computer will think, oh, the airbag system's messed up. And then I got to get the dealer involved because the airbag light will come on. Disconnect the battery, wait 15 minutes. Okay, step two to remove the airbag. There are two Torx size 30 bolts on the sides of the wheel that you have to remove. Torx are these star-shaped things that look kind of like Allen wrenches. You can pick up at Harbor Freight for like seven bucks a set of them and uh, just use the T30 Torx. Take those two bolts out and then you should be able to begin to lift the airbag out and then you can disconnect the two wires. There's one that clips from the bottom so you remove this little plastic cover at the bottom of the steering wheel. And then another one that's like a little ground thing that you slide off. Uh, remember, when you put it back together, you need those two things reconnected before you connect the battery or your airbag light will come on. Now there's one more wire you need to disconnect and that's the cruise control uh, harness. That's the thing that we're gonna be adding a couple pins to so that that way we can uh, attach our two wires for the remote control for the steering wheel we're gonna add. Disconnect that, and then at that point, you should be able to remove the wheel. There's a big bolt. I believe it's 14 millimeter. Put some force on it and loosen it. And then, if you're lucky, the steering wheel should slide off. I wasn't so lucky, so I went down to AutoZone for 20 bucks deposit. It's free when you return it. Um, you can get a steering wheel puller, which is what I've attached there with the three bolts. Screw the two bolts on the side into the wheel, and then the center one puts force on the hole where the big bolt was, and then you can tighten it up. Make sure it's level, make sure nothing's bent. The first wheel puller I got was bent. It doesn't work, you're gonna mess your wheel up. Make sure everything looks good, and then you should be able to put a little force on it, and you'll hear this pop, and the wheel will be loose, and you can slide it right off. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and bring it in the house so you can take uh, the wheel apart. There's four screws that hold the back plastic cover on. Take those off. The black plastic cover on the back pops off. Then there's six bolts on the back. Mine only had four. Um, if you have the little flappy paddle things, you've got six. Take those apart, and now the front cover should come off. And then at that point, now you've got two little tiny screws on the back, one that holds your cruise control on, and the other that holds this uh, plastic thing that uh, is just filler. Go ahead and take those uh, off. So now you ask, okay, well, where do I get the volume control buttons? What I did is I just went to uh, eBay and got these ones that are made in China. The gentleman on Fit Freak, what he did is he actually bought a used Civic wheel and uh, stole it off of that. You could do it either way. I think it's easier just to get the Chinese built ones. They're aftermarket, but it's just a switch. It should be fine. Now, I was hoping I could just plug these uh, Chinese built ones right in, but they're wired for a Civic, and it is totally different. Uh, the, the tutorial on Fit Freak, the guy is absolutely right. You, it's easier to just patch into the old uh, cruise control than it is to try to rewire the Civic ones. So what that involves is you have to take the harness apart and uh, add two new pins to it. And you go, well, where am I going to get the pins? Well, you, you take apart the one from China and popping those pins out, good luck to you. I, I don't know how you do it, but I just kept poking around in there with a little tiny screwdriver till eventually they popped out after you first pop this cover off so that that way you, it, it's kind of loosened up. That's really important. I'm sure there's a more important trick of how to do it because I ended up breaking the cover, but who cares? This is the one I'm throwing away. 
Then you cut the other two wires, but with enough that you can splice it into something, and voila, you've got your volume control all by itself. Now, if you take a look on the one on your steering wheel that you could remove, you'll see that it has the same colors. Those other two wires that don't have a pin on them, that's for illumination. And you can just get those quick connect, connect things where you uh, shove the one wire through so you don't have to splice it, the existing steering wheel one, and dead end in the, um, the other wire. You don't even have to, to strip the end. And put it in this thing, crush it shut, and then they should be latched together. And then you want to take the two loose pins that are for your switch. One is the switch, one is the ground for the switch. And stick them into the back of the harness that you're going to plug back into the car. And if you look, this is the terminal. The little bump is the top where the latch thing is. And you're looking from the wire side. So this is the wire side of the female connector. You're going to put the green-red wire into pin 5. You start on the top you count from that top left corner, one, two, three, four, five. See how it's blank? Put that one in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Plug the brown wire in there. And then the steering wheel, um, that part, it's wired now. Now you just put it all back together, which involves instead of screwing that filler piece back in, you now screw in the um, controls and it's ready to go back on the car. Now make sure you reconnect all the wires, including both airbag wires. You don't want to have your airbag light come on on accident. Just reminding you again. And I know for me, too, some of the plastic covers I didn't quite get put back together properly, so I ended up having to take the airbag back out, take the wheel all apart, and then realign some stuff. So really take a good look at the wheel before you commit to putting the airbag back in. Okay, next, you'll want to uh, take the plastic cover apart um, that wraps around the turnstocks uh, between the wheel and the dashboard. You might want to pull this apart while you're doing the wheel and just leave it off. It's pretty easy either way. Three bolts underneath the steering column. Uh, they're, they're screws, actually, Phillips head. And then uh, those drop down. You can unsnap the two halves. It comes apart. And then you can see on the top of the steering column, there's this thing on the back. It's the back side of the clock spring. It's another harness. And we're going to want to add two pins to it. And you say, well, where do I get the two pins to add? Well, you remember this uh, connector we cannibalized <laughs> earlier and I ended up destroying the one from eBay, what's left of the uh, cruise control half of the steering controls I s chopped off? Well, when I pulled it all apart, I grabbed two extra pins and uh, went ahead and soldered uh, wires on them that are about two feet long, long enough to get from here to the back of the radio. And that carries the switch and the ground. Go ahead and you want to plug those pins into that harness. Again, this is the wire side. So it's the, the back of the connector where the wires are on this female connector. So again, counting from the wire side of the connector, the tab thing that locks it in place on the top. Um, and then, of course, uh, making sure you've unlatched it so you can push the pin things in there. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Seven is the ground. I ran a black wire just so I could remember. Eight is the switch itself. So that corresponds with seven goes through the clock spring and connects to the brown wire we attached to the plug on the other side. And then eight goes to that uh, green-red wire. Okay, so now that you've added those pins and then they have wires hanging out of it, you go ahead and reassemble the uh, connector back together and then uh, plug that harness into the little jack. Go ahead and put the cover back on around your wheel. And now we're ready to deal with the radio. Dun, dun, dun. This is the tricky part. Now, I won't tell you how to pull the radio part in deep detail. There's lots of guides online that can walk you through that process. So let's look at our diagram again. We patched together the two uh, wires for illumination using the little uh, crush merger things. I don't know what the term is for that. We added pins five and six for the brown and green red wires. Now on the back side of the clock spring, we added two pins uh, that we got left over from uh, the eBay harness. And then we have those two jumper wires. So now we've just got that one piece in the middle where we're going to go between. See, so the harness normally connects directly to the radio. What we're going to do is have this little middleman in the middle that will have our two wires attached to it. So I went to Amazon. I found this guy. He plugs into the uh, existing wire in the car. And I ordered three of them. And I'll tell you why in just a second. And then I found this guy, and I ordered one. This guy plugs into the radio. 
And the idea is that we're going to solder them together, but there's a problem. This one has every pin populated, and this one is missing a whole bunch of pins. Hence why I ordered three of them. Now, there has to be some sort of trick of uh, removing pins without totally destroying it. Um, I don't know if you use a pick set or what. If you're good with electronics and repinning things, maybe you'll figure it out. In the end, I ended up having to sacrifice one of them and just take diagonal cutters and just keep chopping the plastic apart until I could get it loose. But eventually you end up with something that then you can pop into one of the good ones. I ordered three because the first one I messed it up trying to pop the pins in, so I had to use the third one. I was glad I had it. But ultimately you end up with a connector that has all the pins populated. There's a couple of them you don't need to. Here's what the uh, pinout diagram looks like. Again, this is the wire side of the connector, and you can see the ones that are uh, grayed out, blacked out, aren't used by the radio for anything. So as long as you have pins in every single one of these, your connector is good to go. Now, don't make the mistake I did and accidentally attach your two wires that we're going to add to this connector. This connector connects to the body of the car and to the speakers. We need to connect it to the radio. So don't even bother adding the pins for 5 and 16 like I did. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> you don't need them. Now you can get your soldering iron out again and solder all the wires together from the uh, good connector that's fully pinned out that connects to the radio to this new Frankenstein connector we just added a bunch of pins to and make sure they line up perfect. You know, you mess up like your speaker wires and reverse it, your speakers are going to really sound bad. And then on wires 5 and 16, this is where you connect your jumper wire to the radio side connector. And you end up with this really nice little product right here with those two new wires, which go through the connector, through the clock spring, through the other connector, and to your steering wheel controls. So go ahead and disconnect the uh, plug from the back of the radio, add our little patch thing in there, and plug it all back together, put the radio back. And try to tuck those two wires away in a safe place so they don't droop down and mess with your uh, uh, pedals or something and cause you to crash. Then replace all the covers and reconnect your battery and pray. Okay, airbag light went off, good. Radio still works. And I don't know if our illumination works. Let me see, with the flash on it, it may be hard to tell. Yeah, it works. If I could turn the flash off, you'd see that these are glowing, so you want to check that. And now, when I press volume, does it go up? Yes! Okay, if one function works, they'll all work because they just use that one wire. Mode? Yes. Volume? And then I can do the channel. The Chicago doesn't really do channel, it does your preset. I'm Jeff Witcher Sports at 650. With a two and a chance for free. Yep, it works. Cool. So anyway, it works. That's what you need to check. Just make sure, like I say, I put everything back together. Your airbag light goes off. And if you do all that, like I did, and are successful, I'm not liable if you mess up. But if it works, you can thank that guy in Fit Freak for his insta uh, instructions, which I'll try to put in the uh, comments down below.